So, you're missing the narcissist. Maybe you're even thinking that you can try and make this relationship work with the narcissist. Is it even possible to make a relationship work with a narcissist? I'm gonna be talking about, so in this video, I'm gonna tell you how you can get back with the narcissist and be in a relationship with them. Yep, yep, you've heard me right. I'm gonna tell you how you can do that. Watch this video. Hello and welcome back. I hope that you're all doing really well. So, you want to get back with the narcissist. Are you okay? Are you feeling okay? Look, I get it. I know that this relationship with the narcissist was kind of like the best, but also the worst experience of your life. And you're probably thinking, okay, I really want to just know how I can make this relationship work with the narcissist or even if there is a possibility that I can make a relationship with a narcissist work. Do you know what? I'm going to be talking about this in the video and I'm going to be kind of giving you some tips and things that maybe you need to consider if this is what you want to do. Look, there's no judgment. There's no judgment here. I completely get it. Like it is really difficult what has happened and I know that your thoughts at the moment are like, okay, so how do I change? How do I make this relationship work? Or can I get back with a narcissist even? Is this possible? We're gonna look at this in the video. I guess that any video that you've probably seen or things that you have read, everyone's saying to you, don't get back with them. Like, don't do it. You know, do you need your head checking? But you deep inside are thinking, okay, I just need to know. I just need to know you know, is it possible? Can I make this relationship work? You know, I really, I really do miss them. And you know, like what is going on? What is this all about? And that's perfectly normal to think that. Like, I get it. I completely understand. But I'm going to talk to you about some things that maybe you need to consider before you make this move or before you make a decision. The narcissistic relationship is going to be the most intense relationship that you probably would have ever, ever experienced in your life. Yes, it's going to be like the highs are going to be amazing. Like you're going to have loads of memories. There are going to be good times that you have had with the narcissist. Equally, they are going to be the worst as well. They would have brought up the worst in you. Um, you would have found that, you know, you were serving them, you know, with your kindness, with your emotions you know, with your, with, with your compassion, with your empathy, like you would have been giving that to them. Um, you would have given them positive, unconditional regard as well. You would have tried to help them to see how much you can actually help them, you know, and grow and help them to recover from whatever it is that they're going through. You know, so I know that this binds you to the narcissist. This is also called a trauma bond. A trauma bond is something where, you know, you remember all the good times, but then you're also thinking that they have really, really hurt you as well. And you want to talk to them. Like it's, it's this duality that exists within this. And you really want to basically tell them all about like how much you're hurting, but then you remember. Then you remember that it's actually them who has hurt you which is why then it makes it really difficult for you then to kind of detach from this because actually all you want to do is, is tell them that because they're the remedy. Like if you talk to them, if you're with them, they are the remedy to this pain that you are feeling. And it is so uncomfortable in this and it's you just want it to stop. I get where you are. I get where you are. But going back into an abusive relationship, yes, it is abusive it is toxic what has happened this person all they are interested in is getting their needs met and their needs are emotional validation attention from you they want this they crave this they are not the person that you met at the beginning they're not going to be obsessive over you all the time they're not going to put you on a pedestal all the time they only do it once and that's at the beginning of that relationship because they need you to, they need to draw you in. They need your love. They need your attention and it's very potent at the beginning. 
Because once they get you and they've got you, they then can become themselves because they feel like, okay, so you're accepting them for everything that they do, everything that comes with them. They feel like you accept that. So that's why they can then be themselves. And themselves are exactly this, exactly how they are. They are abusive. They do do things behind your back. They do smear you. They don't make you feel good. They take from you. That's who they are. This, the projection at the beginning of this relationship of who they are, this wonderful person who puts you on a pedestal, who makes you feel amazing, that's gone. You're just going to get little breadcrumbs of that going forward. And so they, they enter into this cycle, the cycle of value. They will value you, but they will give you little snippets of that. They're not going to give you what they gave you at the beginning of the relationship. That's gone. That's never going to come back. That's a projection. Because what they're doing is they're mirroring back to you what you are giving them. So they give you a little window, a little snippet of who they wish they were, but they can't keep that going. They can't keep the longevity of that. They can't keep that going because it's too much for them. It takes a lot of energy from them and it's not really them. So they are pretending. Okay, that's what's going on here. They are pretending. So you attach onto that person thinking that they are like that. And that becomes then the fantasy, the idea of that's who they are. And that's where you begin to attach, possibly even fall in love with them because they're giving you everything that you want. Your needs are being met. You are being validated. You are being seen. So that feels good. Like, look, I'm not going to take that away from you. Yes, that feels good. But it's not real. And that is the truth of the situation. It's not real. And I know that you're trying to get back to that because you know the potential that they, that a potential person that they could be. But they're never going to be that. So this is why they devalue you because you're not doing what you're meant to be doing. You're not doing what they want you to do. And that is giving them attention. That is giving them love, compassion, empathy. They want that. They expect that from you. So that's why going forward, you know, they take this energy. They take this from you. They take this validation from you. And you, all the while you're thinking, okay, if I just conform, if I just do what they want me to do, then it's going to go back to that. It's going to be that relationship. But I'm here to tell you, no, it's not. Because it's a phenomenon within this narcissistic relationships that one, it, the narcissist will never return to being that person that they were at the beginning of the relationship. They will, there will be snippets of that, but they'll, it will never go through that. So this is why you have, the, you have the devalue and then the discard and then the value, the discard or devalue and then discard. That's what you get. That is how they learn to be in a relationship. So it's the push and pull effect all the time. They will draw you in, they will reel you in all right, and it feels good, and it feels really, really good, then they will push you away because they're devaluing you, they're putting you down. And then they further push you away because they discard you. And then what they do is when they don't have your attention, when they don't have your energy around them, they will pull you in. Because in a way, yes, they're addicted to that because you have given them this unconditional love that they are craving. Even though they may have others on the side, they are watching you, they are stalking you, they want you, they want your energy because you know what, you gave it to them once and it felt good and they want it back. That's what they're doing, they're wanting it back. So they're never gonna give you what they gave you at that beginning of that relationship that you had with them. It's never gonna be that, it's never gonna go back to that. So that is what you need to realize. Even if you get back into the relationship with them, it is never gonna be as euphoric as it was at the beginning. It is going to be that cycle. You're just going to pick up, pick up where you've left off. So they will devalue you. They'll put you down. They'll put you down to your face. They'll put you down in front of others. Okay. And this again will ruin your self-esteem and your confidence within yourself. That's what they're doing. Because when you are not in that energetic flow, in that energetic state, when someone puts you down, you're much easier then to manipulate and control. And the reason why they're manipulating and controlling you is because they want the validation, they want their needs met. This isn't about love, this isn't about reciprocal relationship. 
This is about them getting their needs met. They don't know any other way to be. Because as children, their parents, this is how they interacted with them. Their parents saw them as a commodity, you know, as a transaction, um, something that they can do for them, for their parents. So they've learned that that's what they've got to do. They've got to pretend to be someone else that their parents want them to be. So if that's how they pretend to be someone, this isn't going to change. This is how they have learned to be. So going into adulthood, into their relationships in adulthood, that's how they are. They learn to be someone at the beginning, someone that you want them to be. They draw you in, they hook you in, and you feel like, oh, this is so wonderful, like this is my soulmate, we're into the same things. No, that's not what's happening here. Once they have got you, they then can be themselves. They are angry, they are damaged inside, they are anxious, they're always looking you know, out into the environment to see how they can control and manipulate a situation so it works out in their favor. That's what they're looking for. They're not looking for a reciprocal, loving relationship. They just want what they can get from you. That's what they're doing. And then they will devalue you further because you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. So that's why they get rid of you. So if that is the kind of relationship that you want, then that is what you're going to get with the narcissist. It's not going to be any different. It doesn't matter how, how if you have acted differently or you've behaved differently or you've said something different or did something different, the outcome is always going to be the same. Because they have an attachment disorder, they're not able to attach to you in a healthy way, but they're also not able to detach from you in a healthy way. So even though they're still communicating with you, even though you know they are still in your life, it doesn't mean that they are that they miss you, that they love you, that they are going to change. It doesn't mean that at all. What it does mean is that they are getting their needs met and they are drawing, reeling you in. That is what is happening here. So you need to really consider, if, is that the kind of relationship you want for yourself going forward? Or do you matter more? Do you, are you worthy of something so much better? Yes. It isn't going to be easy detaching from a narcissist, but it isn't impossible. It's not something that cannot be done. There are people on this channel, on this community who have, who have been able to do that. And you can get through it. It is not impossible. But if you've got to consider this, if you stay in a relationship with narcissist, think about your emotional health. Think about your physical health. Because the more that you are triggered, the more that you are in this anxious state, the more your body is producing adrenaline and cortisol, and that is keeping you stuck, that is killing your body, basically. Because it has physiological effects, you know, it dysregulates your heart rate, IBS, diabetes, all of these issues come with staying with a narcissist because your body is constantly in fight or flight in a nervous, anxious state. There is never a time where it feels good. So these are the things that you need to consider if you want to make a relationship work with a narcissist or whether you're thinking about going back to them. Unfortunately, that is the sad truth. You cannot save this person. It is not possible. So I really hope this video helps you to consider these things if maybe you were like thinking, oh, maybe I could, maybe I could go back. So guys, if you are someone that's going through this, please know that I do offer one-to-one -one consultations. Please see the description box below. I've also got a mentorship that's gonna be starting very soon. Please see the description box below. And also I do have the journal club. This is great for someone who is already in therapy uh, or who's going through counseling, this can work really good like alongside that to help you kind of think about things maybe consider certain things please see the description box below thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video goodbye